Jesus Ministries. Stand up for Jesus. I'm going to stand up and praise his name. I'm going to stand up for Jesus. Oh, I'm so glad that he died for me. And now, thanks to him, been set free. I'm going to stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. I'm gonna stand up and praise his name. I'm gonna stand up for Jesus. And now let us hear the word of God. Standing for Jesus Ministries is brought to you in part by the following. McDowell Professional Pharmacy. Call 377-1088. I'd like to welcome you back today to Standing for Jesus Ministry. We appreciate another opportunity to maybe come in your house that we might say or do something in this program that would bless you. And if you're lost and undone, it might help you know that there is a Lord that loves you and saves you. We'll save you. We'd like to uh, give a thanks. We got Brother Doug Taggart's going to be coming and preaching for us. Him and a few of our beloved sisters from Ligon Church is going to come and, and they're going to sing for us and minister to us in song. And then Brother Doug's going to preach for us. So you be very much in prayer. We're going to get out of the way and let them come and sing. Mother, do not cry for me. All of this is exactly how it's supposed to be. I'm right here. Can you hear my voice? My life, my love, my Lord, my baby boy. As they nailed me to this tree, just know the Father awaits for me. God, how can this be your will to have your son and my son? Whatever happens, whatever you see, whatever your eyes tell you has become of me. Now this is not, it's not the end. I am making all things new. When you were born In that manger where I first held you in my arms So many miracles And lives you changed And this world repays you how With all this pain as they nail me to this tree, just know the Father awaits for me. God, how can this be your will to have your son? Whatever happens, whatever happens, whatever you see, don't want to see, whatever your eyes tell you has become of me. Now this is not, tell me it's not, it's not the end. I am making all things new.
Whatever happens, whatever you see, whatever your eyes tell you has become of me. Now this is not, no. not the end. I'm making all things new. among us and all that he does all of his mercy all of his love the pen of the writer to write every day even this world never contain how i've been blessed the warmth in the winter the flowers in spring the laughter in summer the changing of leaves food on my table a good place to sleep, clothes on my back, and shoes on my feet. I have been blessed. I have been, been blessed. God's so good, good to me. me. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. The way I can count them, there's not enough time. I'll just thank him for being so kind. God has been good. So Father and mother who nurtured and raised, a brother and sister, memories made, her pastor to lead us, an altar to pray, stripes that can heal, a blood that can save, I have been blessed. And I have been blessed, God's so good to me, precious are his thoughts of you and me. Way I can count, and there's not enough time. I'll just thank Him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. We live in a country the greatest on earth, like sins or trees. My shoulder to lean on when I am down. The rock where he leads me when I'm overwhelmed. The place where he hides me under his wing. He's not just a song, he's the reason I sing. Yes, I have been blessed. I have been blessed. God's so good to me. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I can count, and there's not enough time. I'll just thank Him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today with you and thank God for this program here today. I know it reaches a lot of people that's not able to go out to church. A lot of our elders that's been in church for years and years will give anything to be able one more time to get in a, a house of worship with the brothers and sisters. And I thank God for the opportunity to be able to come once again into the house of worship I'd like to talk to you a little bit about opportunities this morning and choices. As a young a father one day offered his son $10,000 for 
or a piece of property. Opportunity for the young man. He took the $10,000. Today that property is called Disney World. Did he make the wrong choice? Probably did. Another opportunity, a man bought a picture one time at a yard sale for $2.79. He took it home and took the old picture out that was, was going to clean up the frame and stuff and behind it was another picture. He took that picture to a museum and got $12 million out of it. An opportunity for him, a good choice. A man and his wife, back in the gold rush, wanted to go and find gold. So they sold their farm that they lived on and went out west, spent all their money, was broke, had to borrow money to come back home on. They said to each other, let's go back by our farm just to get one more look at it. When we got back to the farm, it was all fenced in. Nobody could get into it. The name of the farm was Sutter's Mill. That's the second largest gold find in the history. In Matthew, verse 19 and 26, he said, all things are possible with God. We all believe that all things are possible with God. But if you go on over to the book of Mark in the same New Testament, he says all things are possible to those that believe in Jesus Christ. Now Jesus came to this earth and died for us, give us the opportunity to come and be saved, to get a new birth. But what choice are we making? Are we taking the opportunity that he gave us? Are we making that choice to serve him? You know, the Bible says you must be born again. And Jesus gave us that opportunity to be born again. As he told Nicodemus in the third chapter of the book of John. But many of us today, we're not taking that opportunity that he's given us. We're not taking the choice that we're, we're making the wrong choice. He's not going to make us serve him, but he's given us the opportunity today. When Peter, Jesus was coming by on the water and Peter called out to him and said, Lord, let me come to you. He said, let it be. Peter had the opportunity there to go to Jesus. And Peter started walking on the water. But he took his eyes off the Lord Jesus. When he took his eyes off, he looked at the waves, the storm, he began to sink. Listen to me real careful now. As he was sinking, immediately came to him, Lord, save me. I've been in that situation before, but I had the opportunity when death was at my doors. Several times in my life, near death, when it happened in an instant, I hollered out, Lord, be with me. The Lord, save me. Lord, help me. The first words come out of my mouth. Now, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. You're in that situation today out there that's listening right now. And something, if you was going down the road in a car wreck, and it happened so quick you ain't got time enough, what's going to come out of your mouth? Are you going to say, Lord, be with me? Lord, save me? Or are you going to curse the Lord? I've heard people in that situation curse the Lord. The opportunity he gave us to serve him, his word, in the book of Ephesians, fourth chapter, it tells you to go with a song upon your heart. Sing, as you're going down the road or driving or whatever you're doing, sing a little song, anything that's gospel. And when this situation comes upon you, what you've got in your heart is going to come out. Read his word. Study his word. Study to be, show yourself approved. 
If we take his word and don't read it, see, God's given us the opportunity to have this written in our hearts and upon our minds. But if we take it and we, we leave it folded up, laying on the table, on the TV, and don't never read it, it's not being applied to your heart. In that split second of your life, when death comes upon you, if you've not got the word in your heart, the word's not going to come out. You're not going to holler, Lord, be with me. Lord, help me. Lord, save me. And he's given us this opportunity right here to serve him, to have his word. He said he would write it in our hearts. And he'd write it upon our minds. And it would never depart from us. When you get in that time of need, you'll be able to call upon the Lord. The opportunities that they had there are all the wealth. That God, everybody upon this earth, God has given the opportunities in their life. He don't want us to be poor. He don't want us to live in poverty. He don't want us to be sick. I know when we get old, as we grow old, we, we accept it. We accept being sick. But that ain't what God wants for us. He wants us to live a long life. He wants us to, to prosper upon this earth. It's all opportunities that he gave us. He said, once you believe, start believing upon the name of Jesus, then these opportunities, all these promises will be added unto you. Anything in your life that you do, you'll make a choice. And I tell you today, you're out there that listen to me right now. Make this choice today to have Jesus in your life. Read about him. Study about him. Listen to the preachers. But study it to show yourself approved out there, brothers. Listen now. Let it be in your heart so when this situation comes up on you in your life that you'll be able to call upon the name of Jesus. Amen. I know sickness, all these bad things that happens to us, you know, God don't want this for us. And he told us how that we could overcome it. Let me read scripture. The book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, 33rd verse. Now this is where you overcome all the things this is where you get your wealth, your healings. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I mean, it's simple. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. All the wealth, all the healing. You know, Jesus, he didn't let them beat him with the will to near death for nothing. He said that by his stripes we are healed. In the book of James, the fifth chapter, I don't know somebody out there tonight needing a healing. I don't know if you may be in the nursing home or where you're, wherever you're at right now. Listen, he's given us several options you may call it to be healed. He tells you to pray to him individually. If you don't get your answer, don't give up. There's other ways. Get in his word and read. He tells you to tell your brother, to call your brother, to pray with you. Confess your faults one to another. If you still don't get your answer, don't give up on the Lord. I mean, he's given it to us. Let's claim it. He tells us in the book of James, the fifth chapter, about the 14th verse, he tells you, if any be sick among you, call upon the elders and let them anoint you with the oil. He said, you shall be healed. And when he's talking about elders, he ain't talking about a new Christian who just got saved. He's talking about somebody who's been in it for a while, that's anointed, that's able to teach the word. I mean, a lot of people take the word elders out of this. But let's do it the way the Bible says it, and we will get our healing. Amen? 
Call upon the elders. If you've tried everything else that you, you think of, go over there and read the fifth chapter of James. I know maybe you've seen a lot of people being anointed in the church, but nobody's explained it to you. But this is an opportunity that God has given us, telling us how we can be saved, how we can be healed. Just call up on your brothers, on the elders of the church. Just when you get in a church somewhere, or if you're in a nursing home, whatever, uh, just call up on the elders. And tell them that what your sickness is, and you want to be anointed. Listen, faith believe them. You will be healed. I don't care what it is, what your sickness is. I had a little nephew one morning when I came home from work, working a third shift. I got home with my daughter and her. My mom, uh, my wife was standing on the porch and crying, and I said, what's going on? How come you're not in school? And she said, Casey has had a car wreck. A lot of you people out there know who I'm talking about, little Casey. And she said they had him covered up with a white sheet. And you know when they cover you up at a car wreck like that, it usually means you're dead. First thing was told to me, the little boy was dead. And then... I run in the house and got ready. They, they said that he was alive, but they didn't expect him to live. A helicopter had, had flew down on Route 979 down there and picked him up and took him to Tennessee to the hospital. And uh, a little boy played basketball. We had a church league over there. He played basketball in it. At this time, I was on the road traveling, and people was uh, praying. We get a lot of bad... Uh, publicity about Facebook but this day right here Facebook came in handy some of the people got on there on that Facebook and asked them for everybody to pray for the little boy probably started out with maybe 50 people praying for him and as I was traveling my wife called every little bit and let me know how the progress was with him she said they think he's going to live but he's going to lose both legs and he's got a concussion and his lungs is punctured. A little farther down the road, about 15 minutes later, she called back. Said uh, his concussion's okay, and but he's he's definitely going to lose both legs. As I drove a little farther, about this time, probably thousands of people were praying for the little boy. As I got a little farther down the road to the hospital, they called back again. And she said he's definitely going to live but he still got punctured lungs, and they think they'll be able to save one leg. Said, but the right leg for sure he will lose. Got a little farther down the road, another 15, 20 minutes later, she called back and said, his lungs are all right. His left leg's okay, but definitely gonna lose the right leg. By that time I got to the hospital, was into the emergency room. The doctor came in in the waiting room where they had him at. He's sitting up in the chair talking, but he had that leg bandaged up and the doctor opened it up. And I seen it, and I even thought that no way they could save that leg. And the doctor, when he talked to the mom and dad, he told them, said, we're gonna take him into surgery. He'll have to learn to walk all over again. So the, when he come out of surgery, about two hours later, the doctor said, I can't explain it. The little boy, all I had to do was clean his wound and sew it up. One week later, the little boy was playing basketball again over there in the church league. I mean, prayer changes things. God give us the opportunity that day to call upon the name of Jesus and ask him to help us. Prayers of a righteous man prevail much. I tell you today, you're out there lost and you listen to me today, I don't care where you're at, what your situation is, what sin you have committed, I tell you today, call upon the name of Jesus. He's given you the opportunity to come and be saved this day. You may say, I don't know how to pray. Just get down on your knees and just call out to Jesus and tell him, say, forgive me of my sins. You've got to believe it in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God. 
that he came and he died, and on the third day that he arose again. The Bible tells you if you will believe that and confess it with your mouth, you shall be saved. I mean, that's as simple as it could be. That's the simplest thing it is to be saved. Believe it in your heart that Jesus is who he says he is. Confess it with your mouth, and you shall be saved. Listen, if you've got need, maybe you're in a nursing home and you, you can't get the elders that you can call upon. We've got the numbers running across the screen there. And call them. The brothers are always, I mean, they are always, anytime, day or night, they will pray for you. Man, if you're lost today, give Jesus a try. take an opportunity here just for a moment to talk about this program just for a second. Now I know, I've known Brother Matthew for years when he was a little boy. Went to church with him and his mom. And I thank God for this program that he got and his work that he's doing. Now listen, now, I ain't asking for no money here. I ain't a bagging or nothing. But if you want to be a part of this program right here, Listen at me now. Maybe next week when Brother Matthews are preaching, somebody gets saved. Or somebody will call to get their healing. If you want to be a part of this program today, you want to be a part of this ministry, if you will give $5, $10, whatever you've got, listen now, that makes you a part of his ministry. When Brother Matthew witnesses somebody, they get saved, then that's, that's a plus for you. That's, you're part of that ministry as though you was there uh, preaching yourself. Just think about it now. Maybe you're, maybe you're in a nursing home or in a hospital or at home and can't go to church. Wouldn't you like to see your brothers or sisters like to be a part of this ministry? This is your opportunity. You got the numbers on the screen. If, you've got, if you're in a situation or in a place where nobody can come to you and pray, call these brothers. They'll pray for you anytime. Remember, the prayers of a righteous prevail much. Amen. Yeah.